Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Uh, this is our transfer talk video and we are focusing on Chelsea today. We've got Derek O'Neill has joined us in studio today, as well as Steve, who's our salmon of knowledge apparently of football. Yeah, that's a new, that's a new one. That's uh, that's the new one. So if you see him around, you know what to call him. Yeah. Um, we'll start things off then, basically, boy. I suppose talking about the ins so far. Um, Bakayoko is probably the biggest one, or Rudiger. Um, I don't know which one you probably didn't really hear Rudiger until the Confederations Cup. Yeah, it's when I watched him there. He was pretty good. Yeah, but he was pretty decent. Like he was at uh, Stuttgart, I think, for a while. Then yeah. he went to Roma. Yeah. Um. So he's he's pretty decent. Like, I mean, Conte doesn't sign bad That's defenders. Do you know what I mean? Well, he did sign Luis, but you know he did turn him mm. very much around. You know. Um, I think Rudiger start with him, and I think Rudiger is a really good signing for a team we play with a back three. He spent a lot of the second half of the season when Ferenzi was injured and Perez was out for him. At Roma, actually playing it right back in the back four, but he is more naturally a central defender. But he's very pacey, he's very athletic, um, strong lad in the air and stuff like that. And good with the ball at his feet. He kind of has a little bit of everything. He can be a little bit rash at times with his challenges. He kind of picks up a fair few yellow cards which would worry you in the Premier League, but at the same time, I don't think it's probably as harsh as it would be in Serie A and stuff for bookings. And for the money that Chelsea paid them, I don't think they can really go wrong. Obviously, Zoom has kind of gone out or is about to go out on loan to Stoke. Um, great sign for that. Mm, yeah, very good. which I think is great for both sides because I think Zuma needs a season at a Stoke or someone like that in the he Premier League. He just needs to play games. Yeah. He seems to be suffering from a lot of injuries and if it's game yeah, time. Especially when you, did, when you do his knee and just, he hasn't really come back for you. Yeah. But he's still a young lad, I think, and him going out and allowing to season with Stoke. Stoke done a really good job with Bruno Martins Indy last year and they've signed him permanently now as well. I think him and Martins Indy together at the back will be very good. Um, and he'll play most weeks for Stoke. He'll be in the mix there with Shaw, Cross, Martins, Indy, Muniesa. So it's good for him to go out and get football. And I think Rudiger is probably, at this stage of both their careers, a big upgrade on Zuma. Yeah, who would you compare um, Rudiger to? Boateng, maybe? Jerome, um, Jerome, yeah. Jerome, Jerome yeah, I think Jerome, that. Yeah, I think Jerome Boateng is a very good comparison um, to Rudiger. I think they're very similar I think Rudiger's probably a more polished footballer at this age than John Boateng was. Kind of Boateng was at City at this stage of his career and wasn't really working out. They didn't know if he was a right back or a centre back, and yeah. then he kind of went back and went to Bayern Munich. And we've seen how much he flourished then. But Rudiger's got all the tools to become, a, I would say, a better central defender than Boateng. I think he is a better football brand than Boateng does. Um, and he for me is probably the best bit of business. Chelsea have done so far by some way. Okay, and then we'll move on to the other <laughs> big sign, then Baki Yoko. I mean, he seemed to be a um, very quality player last, last year, the Champions League. Champions League, yeah. And they did win the league as well, Monaco. Yeah. The games against City, the games against City, he really tore them apart. He was, he was pretty good in there. And then, like, the, the, the only get bad game I've seen him has against Juventus. Yeah. Other than that, like, he's quick, he's powerful. Well, he is still quite young though as yeah, well. I mean, you get run around by a very experienced midfield there with, with yeah. Juventus. Yeah. Like, the likes of Kadir and stuff, they know what they're doing. Yeah, kind of Kadir, Pjanic, Marquise, you always playing against there, and they're all wily players who will, you can be as quick and powerful and great movement as you want, but as soon as Pjanic gets the ball at his feet, yeah. he's going to get that ball out and somewhere else before you could yeah. even get near him. Um, I actually worry about Bakayoko coming over. I don't know how well he's going to settle in. He was very much, up until this season, an in-and-out player at Monaco since he moved from Rennes. Um, his attitude was kind of questioned a lot until McAlealy came in at the start of last season at Monaco. And McAlealy apparently saw, saw a lot in him and took him under his wing and kind of made him sell some of his flashy cars and move into a smaller apartment and... Do all of that stuff and focus more on his you know fitness. Him personally? No, <laughs> I just read. A, I've just read a lot of stuff on it in the last week or so. Um, where yeah, he's just kind of tried to set his head straight, but yeah. then at the same time, I've seen all the stuff that Bakayoko's been doing on Instagram and stuff like that about kind of leaving Monaco and coming to Chelsea and stuff. And he screams to me that he's a bit of an immature lad for twenty three. Sounds he's, like Balotelli to me. He do, He's he's got a little bit of as well. 
yeah. yeah, she's got a little bit of Pogba's or Balotelli's about him. Um, but my biggest thing from ask you about it is that it looks like Chelsea are probably going to now let Nemanja Matic go and let him go to United or to Inter Milan or whatever. And they're kind of seem to be bringing in Bakayoko as a replacement. But for me, Bakayoko couldn't be further from the player Nemanja Matic is. Bakayoko to me is a more attacking version of N'Golo Kante and the way he goes up and down the pitch. He's an up and down player. He doesn't control the midfield. He doesn't sit there. He, he doesn't have the ability to sit deep like Matic does and kind of create from deep. So and remember the amount up. of assists Matic got last season? <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think you're buying a budget Yaya Toure, I think, more so than a replacement for the Manu Matic. Yeah, see, Matic last season I don't think was very great. He wasn't very good, in my opinion. I've seen some game like the... If they go find against Arsenal, he lost the ball most times than any other player on the pitch. He strolls around like he doesn't want to really be there. Yeah. And then just talk him wanting to go to United to join Mourinho again. So I think let him go. Yeah, I think yeah, I. No one's bigger than the club. No, so it's the thing with Costa as well. Yeah. I think the money that they could possibly get from Matic is great money for a player who's now what twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah. And is a player who's probably as good as he's going to get and I think he's at quite a high level and I think going into that United team it's obviously an upgrade on Fellaini um, he's an upgrade on anything yeah, yeah. he's, an upgrade. Microphone he's an, an upgrade, upgrade on what they had even in Schweinsteiger and I know you'll argue this with me but on Schneiderland as well I think he's a better player than both of those and that he comes in and <laughs> he makes their midfield better because I think he could sit there Herrera can do the up and down stuff and the all over the pitch and I think Matic coming in more free so Pogba than anything else I think that's what he's a Mourinho type player yeah, he'll do his dog work for him yeah. you know what I, mean? I can't see them sending him to Man United after the, the team, how everything went with Lukaku it looks yeah, like Juventus true. are favourites to get him now yeah I think um, I think they still can because they have a chance all right. it's, it's weird they're all selling to each other like, yeah. even if you look at the, ne- uh, the next person we're talking about Willy Caballero he's gone from City to Chelsea mm-hmm. like they're all kind of selling to each other. Just talk of Aguero going to Chelsea as well. It's just kind of bizarre that they're all kind of... It's turned into like the Italian league with the all yeah, yeah. playing self really each other, is, you know? Yeah, well, that's like you see it with... Yeah, obviously, as you mentioned, the Italian league, like with Leonardo Benucci going to yeah. AC Milan. And, and as he was linked to Chelsea. Yeah, and as soon as you see that happen, you go, right, this transfer market is just... It doesn't matter what club that player is at. <coughs> if another club, even if they're a rival, have the money and can meet these release clauses and stuff like that. That's it. The player is gonna go, yeah. um, and I think I, I personally think Chelsea would sell Matic to United for the pure fact that Chelsea are a team who are not in grave danger of it just yet, but need to be very wary of financial fair play. And you're gonna get thirty million from Matic to go to Juventus, but you're gonna get forty five from to go to United, and that fifteen million is worth a lot more than I think. Matic being in the same league and playing against him twice a season is Matic isn't a player who's single handedly going to win United League title. Yeah. It'd be a different story if they were selling the Medan Hazard. But I think Matic, if they can get 40 45 from him, whereas they're only going to get 30 from Inter or from Juventus, I think he just, Chelsea have to take the financial decision and go, right, well, that extra 15 million is more important than him not mm-hmm. going to United and not going to play for Mourinho. Yeah, well, we're talking about uh, Willie Caballero then, anyway, because we we'll focus on the on the transfers here, and then we'll do the transfers out. Um, he's a decent keeper. It's me and I were talking about um before we we sh- uh, started shooting the video, uh, about he's about the same level as, as Begovic. Yeah, and, You know, you gain ten million. Yeah. On him, as the salmon. Good transfer. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, he's, he's solid enough. His Champions League experience, yeah. uh, obviously with Malaga and stuff like that as well. Decent shot stopper. Makes some mistakes, but still isn't every goalkeeper. Yeah. So, Look, yeah, he's already made a replacement, all right. I think he's probably the second or third best backup goalkeeper in the Premier League. Um, Obviously, Sergio Romero is the best one because he'd start for pretty much every other club mm. in the league, bar one or two. Um, But past that, the Caballero is on a free transfer, about as good as you're going to get. Goalkeeper wise, I think he was probably City's best goalkeeper last ever. year. I would say, yeah, yeah. Not, as a not backup, first choice. As a backup for Pickford, he would have been outstanding as well with the experience yeah. head. And I think the experience head. I know Courtois has been at the top level now for yeah. a good while, but still young. I think you can push Courtois to the next level when you've got a goalkeeper with the experience that Caballero has, 
um, the kind of league title winning experience with can we just go on Willie just put <laughs> <everybody else's fun. laughs> um, the league title winning experience that he has with City and the European experience with Malaga and stuff like that that I think he, that can only help Courtois coming in and now Courtois is learning obviously his first choice but he's going to learn some little bits from Caballero he's already learned stuff from Eduardo who's there the Portuguese keeper yeah. who has bagged the European experience and international experience too and just the experience of being a professional footballer at the top level and I think that can only be helpful for Courtois because you've got all the rumours of him with Madrid and Juventus and stuff like this and I think having players like that around them is probably better for Chelsea than anything because it's just going to continue to just keep his head to the ground and Caballero is going to be competition for him, so that's a big thing for um, Courtois to step up just that extra little bit and kind of really be in the discussion with your David De Gea and stuff as the best goalkeeper in the league. Yeah. Um, happy with the business? Yeah, pretty so far, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously you got um, Ethan Amp- Ampadu uh, from Exeter. He's a young old midfielder. Steve thinks he's just going to go straight on loan. Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, he is. I saw a little bit of him for Exeter last year, obviously being a Porto fan and having to watch the doldrums of English football. Um, he's he's definitely one for the future. I think you'll see him probably go back out on loan to a League 1 or a League 2 club this year. Maybe come in and play year 23s for Chelsea, then go out on loan to Vitesse for a couple of years. Maybe go somewhere else for a year. And then, you know, maybe he plays in the League Cup at 22 years old or something. But I'm not going to get into this Chelsea hoarding good young footballers because... I could go on about it for hours about how they're... Yeah, so um, we'll move on then to the uh, transfers out then. Obviously, Nathan Ake is probably the biggest one and the most expensive one. I'm kind of interested to hear how you kind of feel about that because he's obviously only a youngster. Yeah, I was very surprised with that. Um, I think he's a lot of talent. And the way, like, you seen him at Bournemouth last year. He's talked about it on the show previously that when he was playing, they were fantastic. Yeah. And then when he left, they just seemed to go down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm very shocked to him going out being sold. Well, 20 million is a lot of money, and as you said. Like, it's the new 10 million, though. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And it's cheap for yeah. him, I think. It is I, very cheap. I really do. You see some transfers going around at the minute. Look at Velassi last year, 30 million and stuff yeah. like that. I just, uh, I think it's a, it's a great idea for Bournemouth. Absolutely, um, smashing deal. Yeah, I mean, Chelsea can always buy him back. They, they, do, ha- they do have um, the offer, but they will obviously be buying him back at full price. Yeah. So it's kind of surprising they import a clause. To maybe buy him back at a cheaper, a cheaper yeah, I don't rate. Know, they just never seem to do that. Um, Barca I, always seems to do. I think with Ake, he is a very promising player and everything like that. And twenty million, I think, was a little bit cheap for him to go on perm or on a permanent deal. But I waited for the Ake one. I was going to mention him when we were talking about Rudiger. But Andreas Christensen coming back from Borussia Mönchengladbach is such an upgrade on what mm. I think anything Nathan Ake could ever be. Is yeah, I think Christensen is a wonderful defender. I think he will break into their first eleven by the end of the season. I think he will. Gary Cahill, I think, is on his last legs at Chelsea because you've got Rudiger's come in now. <laughs> I think you've got Rudiger's come in now, who's obviously got loads of experience at a young age and is a top player. Andreas Christensen is brilliant, and then you've got Zuma coming back next year as well. I think you're then gonna have Luis. Z- or Luis Zuma, Rudiger, and Christensen. After yeah, that, yeah, season. it was fairly solid. Um, back in there, yeah, for the th- for the three way system. Yeah, I think I and Christensen, Christensen played. Nothing in, wrong with the three way system. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, um, <laughs> and Christensen has actually played in a three at the back with um, Gladbach for the last two seasons. So he's well used to playing in that system. Yeah. He plays on the right side of it as well, which is somewhere that Chelsea. A little bit, kind of. If they were, if there was one spot in that back three was that was weaker than the other, it was the right side of the back three. Aspilicueta side? No, Aspilicueta was left side, wasn't he? No, right side. Was he? was left. You're right, actually. So I'm wrong on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so upset. But, but I'll have to agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No. But Christian's applied on the right side of it for Gladbach, which obviously, as you now say, is Aspilicueta. So I just put Luis but, out there. But Aspi can move to the left hand side yeah. as well. He's as versatile as they call him. He loves Aspilicueta. <laughs> yeah, he's unbelievable. Um, and I think Christensen can step in on that right side. Christensen and Rudiger are both right sided in a back three. I think you're probably going to see Aspilicueta move to the left side of it. Mm. And the other, and them two kind of battle it out for. That other spot with K or with Cahill, I guess, 
yeah. battling out for a spot alongside Aspilicueta and Luis in the back three if they do stick with a three. Yeah, and yeah. then as far as uh, obviously John Terry's at the lead in there, um, we all knew that was going to happen. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was times coming, all right. He's the greatest defender to ever grace the Premier League, in my opinion. I know I'm a Chelsea fan, but a lot of people say it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, today, but I, I, he doesn't have a patch I, on Rio Ferdinand for I'd me. I'd pick out two. Uh, I couldn't pick up one. Best centre. He, so. he hadn't. I never had any pace about him, but he could read a game. Yeah. Like, this is get. He was a carrier <coughs> call at the John Terry position. And he cleared the ball at the front of the post every time. Yeah. Or Jamie Carrier would call him the best I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's he's not by, that was him <laughs> no no look I think, I, he's, just, I, I think I, he's top quality I think I, he gets more stick than he than he deserves I yeah. think John Terry Ryan is, Giggs did a lot worse and we never get to mention I think John Terry is definitely in the top three of defenders to ever play in the Premier League I think it's more down to preference I think Rio Ferdinand just for me is as I've said I think previously on videos Ferdinand was more I could see Rio Ferdinand stepping into that Barcelona back line in their in their pomp and walking straight in and improving them. Yeah, and I, don't John, think te- uh, I don't think fit, Terry would. Really really. seem like Pepe because he's an absolute knacker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Or Ramos. Uh, Ram- let's, Ramos let's, is a ball. Ramos is quality. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, but yeah, I think Terry was a million Slash percent. 60 mil a bit for him. <laughs> I think Terry was a million percent time to go. Um, yeah, yeah, he'd be a big loss. Sure, he knew himself. He hardly yeah. played. He hardly played. He and did. he even brought back Ake. I think that kind of showed you yeah, Terry's yeah, time yeah, he, was knew, he knew his time was up I think he, he was just mainly there for the dressing room yeah, before be a massive the loss in the dressing room next year it's hopefully they can keep it going what yeah. do you feel on then obviously Cahill is going to take just naturally is taking over as captain obviously <laughs> he, yeah, he I was think team he captain be, much I'd, last I'd, year I'd, I'd get rid of him as well honestly yeah. I cannot stand him I don't I don't really see. I don't really see how Chelsea step to the next level with Gary Cahill no, kind of no, in the heart of it. It's not going to happen. Well, he's 30, 30, 31, 31 now. now. So yeah. he, he's well past his best. He he makes too. He scores goals, but he makes way too many mistakes. Would you have Would you have given the captaincy? I know he was team captain a lot last year, but it's kind of a reboot now that Terry is actually out of the club entirely. Would you have handed the captaincy to someone else other than Cahill? Yeah. Well, uh, either. Who would I put it? Maybe David Luiz, who was very, who I think has come on a lot last season. Yeah. yeah, and he's become a good big leader in that team. I think Aspilicueta is a Yeah, I was just going to well. say him yeah. there, yeah. He's more of the quiet he's, type, he's, yeah. but he's, he, lead, he leads by example, yeah. though. He's just such a, he's a rock. You very yeah. rarely see yeah. Aspilicueta have a bad game. And that's, I think, a big thing for any young player, especially coming into the side, that you're just, you're looking at the professionalism, the example of this guy who has filled in at right wing back, left wing back, left back, right back, centre back, can just do it all, doesn't goals. complain. He could probably play in goals if he wants to tell the league. Really in goals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I would agree with you in the fact that I think Cahill is probably on his last legs at Chelsea yeah. and I think he was probably another Michael Carrick type getting the captaincy at United. Yeah. It was more of a token gesture than anything else. Here's a testimonial and a captain, a captain's iron man. For there a year. Go. But Ander Herrera is really your captain, like. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then obviously uh, Chilova has gone to uh, Watford. Watford. Um, never really got a chance. No, to be fair, he lo- he is a good player, but yeah, I, I don't think he's up to Chelsea scratch player. Yeah, but, but maybe if he went to like, a club like Watford and tried to work yeah. his way up, maybe he might get there eventually. Yeah, and he always, he was very he'd love to come back hopefully one day, and yeah, I hope it does well. Hope, yeah. hope it all goes well. I don't think any Chelsea fan kind of begrudged him the move. No. The biggest shock I think I had when I seen Chalaba going to Watford was the fact that there wasn't a loan at the end of it because Nathaniel Chalaba has been going on. Did you not see the way they released the video? No, I didn't see it. The I, there's too many videos yeah. of stupid signings. They did it on Sky released. Sports News. They had it. They had all the players introduce themselves, and then he came in at the end. Oh, right. That's pretty cool. If you're a Watford fan, you, you yeah. obviously yeah. Uh, enjoyed it a lot more. Um, right. And then. So do you win the season? Yeah, no, just I think Chalaba has bad <coughs> potential, obviously. I don't think clubs like Napoli and stuff would have taken chances on him for a year yeah, exactly. if he didn't have something about him. And he's still somehow only 22, 23 years Watford old. Watford has a bad club, but they get in a lot of good players. Yeah, Every man, Pereira yeah, yeah. and stuff like that yeah. as well. They do get in a lot of good Etienne young players. Etienne Capoue, who obviously didn't do well at Spurs, but my God, at Toulouse before that was an absolute metronome of a midfielder. And, yeah. and he scored a lot uh, wasn't that, uh, yeah last year he scored a yeah, lot of goals did, yeah. and a lot of assists he was if you were playing 
fantasy Premier League, he was in everyone's team because he was about five million and he yeah, was like the third point scorer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like the third top point scorer for a midfielder and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think Chalobah do really really well at Watford. Like he's a really good player and he just needs to play every week. Yeah, and then obviously another player needs to get out uh, to play games for from try and it's gone to yeah. be on then as well. He's another good uh, young player. Yeah, he's been loaned out a lot. Yeah, he's been sold now though. Yeah, so, so it's a bit like Atsu as well. Yeah, of these, yeah. These I, I did, that's why I don't like this team buying all these young players and and then say, I know they're making profits out of them, but. It's not the way to do football these days. Yeah. You know, football is it's just terrible the way it's going. You're turning kids. You're turning a kid like Lewis Baker, who had loads of potential when he made, uh, uh, came in to kind of the senior set up at Chelsea, and he was just immediately shipped out on loan to Vitesse, and he's just kind of been exiled to Holland for the last three years nearly, and <coughs> he hasn't moved anywhere yet. He's still kind of sitting there around the first team. He's probably not going to play this year. So he's probably going to end up out on loan again. again yeah. And it's just a player who he's now at an age of 22, 23, the same as Chalaba, where he, they just, he needs to leave. He himself needs to leave and go and play games, not in the Dutch League. The Dutch League is great for developing an 18, 19 year old player because you will be taught how to play football in the right way because that's just the ethos of that league. Yeah. But if you're a Chelsea player coming back now at 22 years old, like Traore is coming back in and going right. Well, I can't see the immediate route to being in the first eleven here. It's time to go. It's time to find another club. It's time to play football. Traore had a really good season at Ajax last year. He'll be really good for Leon. He'll play up front for them. He's basically going to be their Lacazette replacement. He'll score goals. He's got bags of pace. I think Chelsea will regret selling him in two or three years' time because I think he's going to turn into an absolutely top player. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there is need to play. yeah, there yeah. is no space for him yeah. in Chelsea's first probably eighteen because of the position he plays in. Yeah, and they have like two teams basically. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you've got Pedro, you've got Costa, you've got Hazard, you've got Willian, and so he's gonna be behind all those guys. Costa's match not wise, be there, so not he's gonna probably. be kind That'll of be our next point. Yeah, he's gonna be kind of sixth choice. So I I like to see a player like Pedro <laughs> just go right. I'm not giving it another year at Chelsea to see if I can break into the team. I'm going to go to a big club and play for. Get to our next point is Diego Costa and the whole situation around him. I'm just interested to see how you feel as a Chelsea supporter uh, about him. He's one of those players that obviously if he plays for your club, you love him. If he plays against you, you hate him. I personally hate him. Not because he's that good. It's just because I just, I just feel like he's an idiot. But that's just me anyway. No, he is an absolute idiot. But what he does on the football pitch, you can't ignore. Like... Tears teams apart for fun. He makes a annoys players just, and they get get on him. They tackle him, and he loves it. Yeah, but he gets annoyed too. There's a lot of time he yeah. loses the head. Well, I, I just wouldn't like him. Last the season, I've I seen something different in him. Is that he didn't fight back. He he get up and get on with it. Yeah. I, I thought Conte had changed something in him, but then when January came around, he wanted to go. And he just never looked like the player he was no, then for no. the first uh, three, four months of the season. I see, like, ever since he's joined us, he always talks about Atletico Madrid. So, I don't think he's ever wanted to really be there. So, I just wonder why he it's left Atletico like, in the first place. It's a bit like a, a Lukaku. I think Atleti needed the money that summer. That was the biggest reason behind him going. And obviously, there was a lot of teams in for him as well. Yeah, but that was his first good season. Oh, yeah. He was, a for me, I was actually shocked when Chelsea signed him and he worked out because he had had the one really prolific season at Atleti before that he had played second fiddle to Falcao and before that he had kind of just bounced around with Mallorca and stuff like that in Spain he never really came off at any club and Atleti signed him as a backup and Simeone seemed to just click with him on a personal level and they seemed to work really well together he was able to manage his anger with him and stuff like that and get him playing really well he was actually very good as a support for Falcao that season, as the guy who kind of done the donkey work to create the space for Falcao to score. And then Falcao left, and um, Simeone put his faith in him to be the kind of leading striker, and he thrived on it. I think what Costa needed in the second half of last season, after the whole thing with China happened, was when he didn't score for three or four or five games or whatever, he Conte had to drop him for Batshuayi. Mm. He just had to drop him for Batshuayi and Conte had to hope as well that Batshuayi came in and scored a goal. Scored a goal, won them a game or something because then all of a sudden Costa goes, all right, 
well, I'm not just going to walk into this team every week and I'm not just going to be able to do what I want and say what I want and just continue to be here and get paid and play games. I'm trying to forget Basra is there. Like, <laughs> yeah, so until much he scored the there. winner when we got won the league. Yeah. And yeah. then he comes in after he's won the league and yeah. just scores in every game and yeah, shows yeah. why you spent the money on him. But I don't know. If, this, if that was me at my club, as soon as Costa wanted to leave and go to China in January oh, that would be me get See, get rid of you yeah. if you don't want to be at the club I don't care who you are I don't care how good you are get out nobody's yeah, bigger than that football that's club that's it out you go and uh, that's maybe a cynical out. fan's point of view to it and maybe not thinking as logically as you should when you're a manager or whatever but at the same time if someone expresses an interest to not want to be in your dressing room anymore and not want to buy into what you're trying to sell to your team and the club then what's the use in having it's it? It's bad for the atmosphere of the team as well, then, obviously. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. We all play the teams with players who want to leave. And it just it creates a, a negative atmosphere yeah. for everybody else. Yeah. I thought the wheels were going to come off Chelsea's title once, once January I did. came on. I myself, yeah. Well, I, th- I always had faith and continue to. I know we're going to talk about all the players that Chelsea might sign. A lot of faith in the fact that Michi Batshuayi is a brilliant striker. And he just needs some game time. Just one last striker who's going to leave, Laura Kramey. We won't talk too, 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 too well, much. Well, yeah. Like, is he still on Chelsea? He's still books? there, yeah. I think he's gone, he's gone over to Asia with them. So I think they were giving he's him a chance. He scored a couple chance. of goals. He did, he scored a few goals, yeah. He? Yeah, he's made a paper mache. Yeah, well, that's, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's played injured. six games for Palace last season or something. Yeah, well, look, we won't yeah. spend too much. No. Yeah, he's probably going to go. Uh, I'd say he's so, so so China. China. He Probably is, China. He yeah. is an absolute candidate for China or for Turkey. Maybe Stoke. that's why they brought him over and they just leave him over Stoke. there. Stoke. Play, replace him for Arne Outfit, I'd say. No, replace him for Wilfred Bonney. <laughs> Who's he even play for anymore? He was apparently at Stoke last season, yeah, but I know, completely but forgot that happened. Is he still on the books of the <laughs> City? He is now back at City on their pre-season tour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing the tiki taco with Pep. <laughs> um, you know, I suppose we'll, we'll kind of move on to Ch- uh, Chelsea's possible tra- uh, transfers now. They're obviously after agreeing a fee there with Mata today. Morata. Morata. Not Mata, Mata. Morata, so <laughs> Yeah. I have been working all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 80 million euro. A lot of money, but he's young. He scored... 20 goals and 19 starts for Real last season. Yeah. So he was the season really before that he scored Champions League finals. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was the second top goal scorer for Real Madrid in all competitions last year, and he played just under half of the minutes available. Mm. And that's for me, for a striker to be that prolific in a <coughs> team that good, and not and just not play as much minutes as he should be. It just shows to me that you put him in the team and you give him any sort of faith and put any faith in him. Yeah, yeah. He's going to score goals. He's a guy who he actually reminds me a little bit of a Raul, but a more f- a bigger physical Morientes. specimen than him. Yeah, maybe more of a Morientes. When he was, when uh, he was good. just a lot yeah. quicker. He's yeah. very quick for the, size, for yeah. the size. But he's like Morientes. Morientes was a very good goal scorer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before he went to Liverpool. Yeah, he's a great first touch as well. I'd Unlike some other players out there, <laughs> I think if I think if Chelsea were paying 160 million euro for Morata, I'd still be okay with it. I do genuinely think yeah. if you put a bit of faith in them and just I play him, even if they were paying 160 million euro for him, oh, I'm happy with if you were paying him. a world record fee for that man, I would still say he's worth all but the money because he'll score you gold. The thing people argue is you're paying 160 million for a substitute. Do you but, know what he's, I mean? but he's a substitute in a team because. They've changed the formation to a four-one-two-one-two, yeah, and and Cristiano Ronaldo has kept them out of the team. Karim Benzema for Real Madrid does a lot of donkey work. And I agree. Does a lot of running the channels for Ronaldo. That's not something Morata is going to do. Morata, as you say, is a really good first touch. He likes to get on the ball. He likes to drop into that space that Ronaldo likes to drop into. So he's kind of now with the change of formation. You've got Isco or Asensio. Should look at this way. He's 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 uh, Spain's main strike. Yeah. So Spain yeah. have always had good goal Very scorers. Good goal scorers yes. He was he was at Real or Juventus had to spend 80, 80 odd million for Higuain just to replace him. That's and true. that's that's the type that's the level of player you're talking about that they have like that Chelsea are getting for basically the same fee. As you I got for him, yeah. or if you for him, I'd, right? I'd put out those. Uh, obviously, there was talking Aguero coming. I mean, Aguero, Morata, where are you at there? 
obviously Aguero because he's a proven Premier League goal scorer. Yeah. But at the same time, he's obviously 29 now. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm happy, very happy with Morata, but I don't agree with the price tag. Yeah, but, but then again, it's the way well, transfers are. I was saying to you there, obviously off air. Um, people always saying that the transfer fee, but I mean at the end of the day, it's not us paying. Yeah. Some of these billionaires, it's 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 fifty euro. Yeah. Listen, yeah. yeah. it's, it's people talking about oh god, how is Pogba worth a hundred million or whatever, and this and that. United signing Paul Pogba for a hundred million is like Stoke signing someone for twenty million. Yeah. That's the way but it they is made, in, made in marketing and terms. Yeah, so they made it back off Ibrahimovic alone. Yeah. yeah, and more. Like they make it back off, they make it back off the marketing that they can then do with Adidas and stuff like that in regards to Pogba. They make that money back, and they make that money back through the fact that they are the biggest football club in the world in terms of their marketing and how they brand themselves. If you didn't realise when I was he's a closet man United fan. <laughs> Not a closet man United fan. Um, but it's the same thing when you look at Chelsea. Chelsea aren't as big a brand as United because they haven't been at that level for as long. Yeah. But at the same time, Chelsea have massive fan bases in different parts of the world. And because of that, 80 million for Morata is maybe 50 million for Liverpool signing Morata at this yeah. point. Because Chelsea are now, in a global sense, probably a bigger brand for marketing and stuff like that than Liverpool are. So you're talking about maybe 50 mil is what the real price is. If you're looking at transfers from five, six years ago, he's about the same money as Fernando Torres went to Chelsea for at this point. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's Belotti and Aubameyang as well linked. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, they're obviously they're all top quality players. Yes. Oh, Aubameyang is unreal. Yeah. He top goal scorer in the German League last year. To beat Lewandowski for the top goal scorer, he's thirty-one goals and thirty-two appearances. There you go. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. He did only beat Lewandowski by one. He only played twenty-nine, but <laughs> basically the same numbers as. One but of I the I top I Lewandowski is uh, getting to play with better players though. So, uh, with, with in that Bayern team, I don't think there was a better player in Germany last year than he's Van Den Bellet though. And that's yeah, but that's one player. You look at Bayern's team, all of them are class, top yeah. class. Yeah, but at the same time, twelve of we're gonna uh, about this. Tw- yeah, twelve of uh, twelve of Bamiyang's goals in all competitions last year were set up by Dembele, so he does okay. provide. Okay. Dembele big... gets injured. Who's he going to set up? Yeah, of course. He but he didn't just... have. But of course, he didn't have that. He didn't have that problem like because Dembele was there. Yeah, um, but my point being is that Bayern can drop a player who's top quality, bring in another top quality. Oh player, yeah, of course. And Bayern deploy Lewandowski yeah. with those goals. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Lewandowski um, has it easier, absolutely. But at the same time, I don't think Aubameyang was slumming it. And all right, well, yeah. all right. Uh, out of all those players, who would be your obviously Morata's degree? But if you had to pick one realistically that you could get, well, Aguero, without a doubt, Aguero. and price tag realistically. 60 60 60 yeah. million yeah. this day and age is 30 million yeah, yeah. 2 3 years ago you know what I mean and then obviously there's um, there's the two full back positions there that are linked there's Alexandra and Danilo yeah. two Brazilian full backs Conte loves those it's types of players Danilo is close to the city mates. now <laughs> they're what? they're also best mates like best best mates I don't think the two of them are going to come. I think one will come. Yeah. yeah. I think if if Chelsea were, as you said there, like um, Danilo seems to be closer to City now, if Danilo was to come to Chelsea, you're then making it about 20 or 20% more likely that Sandro will come. Yeah. Because the two of them lived together at Porto for years and years, but crying when one of them, I think Dan, or I think Alexandro actually went the year before Danilo did, and uh, they were crying when they were saying goodbye at the airport and all. It was like a little, they had like a little romance going on there. Um, but I think either of them would be an upgrade on what you have. Well, I like Marcus Alonso, yeah. but he's not Alexandro. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, um, those positions you have Alonso and you have um, Moses from last year, and they both were very much. Um, well, obviously, Moses was very much very, um, probably the most improved player in the Premier League last year. And then you had Alonso who came in, and no one was expecting to be as good as he was. No. And he was like, you know, he was scoring free kicks, he was um, supplying goals. He was, uh, the two of them on each side were, were like a focal point. And if they do get in one or if not two, you're, you are looking at like Chelsea going, but they've been a lot, lot better. And like even last year with those two, they've done very well in that yeah. system. If they have um, 
a better player, those two better players, then I don't know how good they could be. Yeah, well, we need them for the Champions League and back into the Champions League because I don't think Moses and Alonso are the Champions the League level, level yeah. yeah. So we need somebody like them in there to really do a job. I think um, if Danilo was to go to City or was just to stay at Madrid or whatever like that, even if they were to get, say, a Ricardo Pereira who's playing for Port or back of Porto now, was at Nice last year. It's a player who played in the right wing or right wing back role for Nice. I think if you were even to get a player like that in, who he's a superb player and he's been linked with 30, 40 million to basically every club in Europe. Um, if he was to come in and Alonso was to stay on the left, I think you'd be absolutely fine. I think Alonso is a really good player. Um, obviously, if you were to get, if you were, if Alexandro was available for any sort of money, and you were able to bring him in, great. But I don't think left wing back is really that pressing a position because if you go to a four as Pelicueta moves to left back and that's fine and in a five I think Alonso's perfect for going up and down there I think Victor Moses was a one year thing he worked really hard done all of that you put him in the Champions League you get to the knockout stages if he comes up against Barcelona and comes up against Neymar or comes up against Real Madrid and he has players like Marcelo running down his side Chelsea are in all heap of trouble because he is suspect defensively. He can go up and down. He's got a bit of pace about him, everything yeah. like that. But defensively, he's got to get found out against them players. Too. No, yeah. yeah. I think because he was playing on the right side of it, Kante played on the right side a lot as well. I think he was kind of yeah, shadowed a little bit by the fact Kante was so up and down yeah. and kind of done a lot of his defending for him. Two Kante's playing last year. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah he had two players winding him. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, all right. Well, um, kind of wrap it up there. But as far as uh, one transfer target that uh, realistically you could sign, uh, is there anyone off the list there that you would want, or anyone that's not on the list that you could realistically get? I'd love that we've made. Tour over that. A tour over that. A tour over that. Smashing player, and but I don't think anybody will get him. Yeah, well, I, don't, yeah. I think he's quite he's quite content at, yeah. at Bayern there. Yeah, especially if Sanchez was to move to Bayern, I think he'd be. Happy out yeah, there. Yeah. Um, well, I think he loves him, doesn't he? Yeah. I think Chelsea, I think as far as Chelsea goes, from my point of view, I think Car- uh, Claudio Marchesio from Juventus. Great great relationship mm. with Conte. Wonderful central midfielder. They were um, banging each other. Anyway. Well, they might have been. <laughs> <laughs> we're not putting any real rumours out there. <laughs> TMZ, don't pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I think Marquezia. I think Marquezia would be don't a brilliant. Tell them why. I, I think Marquezia would be a brilliant signing for Chelsea, and I think it'd actually allow Bakayoko to get a year under his belt. Same if Vidal was to come in or something like that, yeah. would allow Bakayoko that year to adapt to English football. Yeah, it's just the price he's playing for Marquezia. Like only thirty or forty million apparently from. Yeah, but he's like twenty-nine. Still, he's one of them players who he's like a Mikel Arteta when he signed for Arsenal. You'll still get four years out, four good years out of him, and for that price tag at the level he plays at, I don't think that would be an issue for Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if there's anyone that we've missed out or you feel like Chelsea uh, could sign or what you want to sign, do leave it in the comments below. Thanks very much to Derek for coming on. Thanks, Steve, uh, thanks for being the salmon. <laughs> um, thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much for watching. See you now. Have a good week.